Hello everyone, I am Dr. Osman reporting once again from the University of KwaZulu-Natal, the premier university of African scholarship. Um, previously, you have looked at uh, material balancing on various species across non-reacting as well as reacting systems. And today we are going to look at element or atomic balancing, where we balance the actual elements that are in these species. And this particular technique has many advantages and disadvantages and there are certain applications particularly with combustion and the fossil fuel industry in which element balancing is absolutely essential to solve material balance problems. So let's look at how we go about doing element balancing. Okay, so we can conduct element or atomic balances on units and or entire processes instead of conducting species balances. Okay, so instead of looking at species across a reactor or a separation unit, we can look at each individual element in those different species and do a species balance. Okay, and this can be used to ultimately obtain the same results and objectives as species balances. Element balances have their advantages and disadvantages. They are particularly useful when the reactions occurring in a reactor are not known. In other words, they are perhaps too complex, there are too many reactions. And we can use element balances ultimately because no matter what, in chemical industries, atoms will always be conserved, whether we are talking in mass or molar terms. Okay, so let's consider just any arbitrary system. We have different species S going in and species S coming out. And what we note is that the net output rate of species, which we can define as the output of each species minus the input. And the net output rate can be given as follows for any particular species. The net output rate of species S is the summation of the flow rate of um, J of S from J being equals to 1 to big J minus the input flows of S. Okay, so these are our output streams and these are our input streams. Okay, now the net output rate could be zero, it could be negative, it could be positive and that depends on whether our species are being reacted and consumed in the system or whether they are being produced by the system. Okay, so, or perhaps the system is only consisting of separators, in which case the net output rate will be zero because whatever goes in will come out. Okay, there's no transformation of species into a product or there's no consumption or production. Now suppose we have many species of S, small s going to big S, and let's assume that each species is composed of E number of elements, okay, big E. We can define alpha E S to be the number of atoms of element E in one molecule of species S. Okay, so alpha ES is essentially the atomic coefficients. So let's look at, for example, a stream containing two species, CH2O and CH3OH. Okay, and we can number them species 1 and 2. And note that we have three different elements in these species, we have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen. Okay, so collectively there are three types of elements in these species. And we can give these numbers as well. So let element one be carbon, element two be hydrogen, and element three be oxygen. And we can count or index 
alpha 1 1 meaning alpha of carbon in species 1 we have one carbon there and we can also count alpha 1 2 okay so that's alpha of carbon in species 2 okay so that's also one if you're looking at alpha 2 1 in other words the alpha of hydrogen in species 1 that's 2 and for species 2 it will be 3 plus 1 4 and so on for alpha 3 1 we have one oxygen and 3 2 is again one oxygen now remember I said that the net output rates of a species can be positive it could be negative or it could be zero however if you are looking at only each individual element then our net output rate or net molar outflow rate of element E in all species is a summation okay so we have our alpha ES times our output rate of each species S going from 1 to big S and because no matter what whether we are talking about separation systems or reacting systems the number of elements will always be conserved the number of um, each particular element coming out will always equal to what was uh, coming in so our net output rate in this case will always be zero because elements are always conserved okay so this balance always occurs for elements and we can talk in terms of molar balancing here if we want to convert to mass balancing we need to take into account the atomic mass of any element E and for that particular element okay so let's say for element 1 going to E is equal to 1 to big E the different um, the, the number of elements and we have to take into account the atomic mass of E and the net output flow rate of that particular E in our various number of species okay so it takes a bit of time to understand this equation okay so I suggest you go through this this page and the previous page that uh, that we've looked at and see if you can write it out yourself and understand it for yourself okay if we have to write it collectively in mass terms we can simply write that the summation of s going from 1 to big s of ms where ms is our molar mass okay given specifically as follows our atomic mass times the number of elements in that particular species and that will ultimately be equal to zero okay and this will ultimately reflect that our net output flow rate in mass terms will of course be zero okay in some ways this is more convenient than writing it in molar terms because our net output flow rates can be positive negative or zero when we are talking about species in molar terms however in mass terms for whether we are talking about elements well if we are talking about elements in mass or molar terms this relationship will hold okay so take special note of these two relationships this is in terms of mass and this is in terms of moles okay and all of the technique of element balancing will be built upon writing out and understanding our net output flow rates and performing an element balance using these output flow rates now let's consider a simple example okay, and this is the catalytic dehydrogenation of propane so we have propane coming in that's just a single species at a flow rate of 58.2 moles per day and it is 
catalytically dehydrogenated okay in other words it's um using a catalyst to convert our propane to dehydrogenate it into various products and as you can see there are many products being produced so this would of course imply that we have a very complex reaction mechanism taking place here not something that we can easily define okay and we are given the compositions of the output we have C3H8, C3H6, C2H6, C2H4, CH4 and H2 and we have the full composition of our output stream 2 okay that's our N2 and we also note that there is elemental carbon being deposited as well as a result of this catalytic dehydrogenation and they want us to calculate the rate of this carbon deposition okay in other words they want us to calculate N3 the flow rate of N3 now let's um, look at this problem we have just two elements okay although we have many species which would of course have implied that we needed to do many species balances okay there's lots of balances here however if we are looking at element terms there's only carbon and hydrogen in the system so let's consider the elements and start with stream 1 Okay, note that stream 1 has 58.2 moles per day of propane, right? So that's this entire species. However, there are 3 moles of carbon in 1 mole of propane. So in terms of our carbon, our actual molar flow rate of carbon will be 3 times 58.2. And that will give us 174.6. And in if we look at our hydrogen, there are 8 moles of hydrogen in 1 mole of propane. So the molar flow rate of just our hydrogen in stream 1 is 8 times 58.2. And that will give us 465.6. Okay, so that's our input rates of our elements. Now let's look at our output rate. Okay, so we have many different species. Okay, so let's just uh, zoom in here a bit. Okay, this is C3H8. And this 45% composition. And note that in the case of hydrogen, there are 8 moles of hydrogen in 1 mole of C3H8. <clears throat> and note also that from our knowledge of species balances, we can say that N2 of C3H8 is equal to 0.45 times our total N2. Okay, so this ultimately gives us, so that's our 8 hydrogens multiplied by our, our 0.45 times the total flow rate N2. If we are counting our hydrogen in C3H6, we would have 6 hydrogens in 1 mole of C3H6. So the flow rate of hydrogen for this species will be 6 multiplied by 0.2 multiplied by N2 okay and there is it here and the same for C2H6 the moles of hydrogen will be 6 multiplied by 0 0.06 times N2 okay and here we have it We have 4 moles of hydrogen in C2H4, 
So the flow rate of hydrogen accounting for C2H4 will be 4 multiplied by 0 0.01 multiplied by N2. Okay, and there is it here. Okay, and to complete it, we have our methane and our hydrogen. 4 moles of hydrogen in 1 mole of methane. So it's 4 multiplied by 0 0.03 times N2. And for hydrogen, it's 2 moles of elemental hydrogen in hydrogen gas. So it will be 2 multiplied by 0 0.25 times N2. And here it is over here. Okay, and if we sum all of that up, the total moles of hydrogen in stream 2 is equal to 5.82 multiplied by the total species flow rate, N2. Okay, so note that the moles of each individual element is most likely higher than the molar flow rate. Okay, so N2 is still the species molar flow rate. Okay, so, and that is what we will always use. Okay, so five, so N two of hydrogen is equal to five point eight two times N two. However, according to this particular system, we have eight multiplied by fifty eight point two, so that's four hundred and sixty five point six moles per day of hydrogen coming in and there's no hydrogen coming out in stream 3 it's all coming out in stream 2 so ultimately we know that N2 of hydrogen will equal to N1 of hydrogen so that's 465.6 Therefore, we can use this information to get our N2. Okay, so our N2 is 80 moles per day. Now this N2 is the sum total of all of our species flow rates. Okay, it's as before. Now that we are done with the hydrogen balance, let's look at our carbon output. Okay, so we have carbon coming out at stream 3 as well as stream 2. So we apply the same procedure, so let's look at stream 2 first. It will be 3, 3 carbons in 1 mole of C3H8, so that will be 3 multiplied by 0.45 times N2. This will be 3 multiplied by 0.2 times N2. This will be 2 multiplied by 0 0.06 times N2. 2 multiplied by 0 0.01 times N2 and 1 multiplied by 0 0.03 times N2. Okay, there's no carbon here. And so here it is all written out. So that's our total carbon output. And of course adding in our elemental carbon at stream 3. Okay, however now we know that our elements are always conserved. So C out must equal to C in. We know how much of carbon is coming in. Okay, and that was calculated here, 174.6. So we know our carbon input. So what goes in must come out, regardless of whether this is a reacting or separating system. We are looking at the elements. So we know the value of C out. 
and we also know the value of N2 from our hydrogen balance. So once we substitute for C out as well as N2, we can solve for N3, which is what our aim is. Okay, and so we end up with a value of N3 of 5 moles per day. Now let's look at a more elaborate example. Okay, so let's consider the industrial production of formaldehyde, which is CH2O, by the partial oxidation of methanol. Okay, so this is also a reactor with a, with a um, complex reaction mechanism. It's too complex for us to actually state all of the reactions. So we have our catalytic reactor and we have methanol and air coming in at a ratio of 40% to 60%. And we have two product streams, one of them contains CO2 as well as CO and H2 and N2. As you can see all of the nitrogen ends up here. And also we have stream 3 with our formaldehyde as well as our unreacted methanol and some side products. Okay, so it is stated that a silver catalyst is used and they've given us a conversion of methanol of 55% and that's attained for a feed of 40% methanol in air. A number of side products are occurring and they are scrubbed ultimately so we have two output streams and we want to find the composition of both output streams okay so let's just look at this we have our species various species we just have methanol coming in with oxygen and nitrogen and multiple products are being produced including CO2, CO, H2 our key product, which is CH2O, as well as HCOOH and water with some unreacted methanol here. Okay, we are also given a conversion. So that's our conversion there of uh, methanol. And we are also told that the molar flow rate of CH2O in stream 3 is equal to the molar flow rate of the methanol in stream 3. Okay, so these two are equal in molar flow. Regarding the elements, we have four elements. We have our carbon, hydrogen, oxygen as well as nitrogen. Okay, and we have all of our nitrogen coming in and going out. So nitrogen is an inert in this particular reaction. We can also, if we have to look at our different species, we can actually index them using a matrix just to get an idea of the different species and the elements they hold. And also note that for this problem, no flow was specified. So we can simply choose a basis of perhaps a thousand moles per day of feed. Okay, so let's use our information and see what we can obtain. If we assume a basis of a thousand moles, per day of feed, then our molar flow rate of methanol in stream 1 will be 400. And of course our flow of air will be 600 and we have to take 21% and 79% off that 600 to get our flow of oxygen. Okay, and that turns out to be 126 
and 474. Remember that we have a 55% conversion of methanol. So let's try and make use of that. Okay, that's equal to 0.55, which is equal to the flow rate of methanol coming in. minus the flow rate of methanol coming out. Remember all of the methanol is coming out in stream 3. Okay, and from this equation we can obtain our flow rate of methanol to be 180. Okay, and remember another subsidiary relation that was stated here is that the flow rate of the formaldehyde is equal to the flow rate of the methanol in stream 3. Okay, so N3 of CH2O is also equal to 180. Okay, and that is all that we can get out of our subsidiary relations and our component specifications for now. So now let's look at how to write an element balance. Okay, so let me just try and fold this up so that we can have a good view. So we are writing balances for our elements. Remember that there are four elements. However, the nitrogen balance, the nitrogen doesn't participate in the reaction and all of it goes out through stream two. So it is of limited use. Let us start with the oxygen balance. And pay, pay careful attention to how I write out these balances. Okay, so we are simply going to write it in terms of output minus input and that's equal to zero. Okay, however, we need to consider the output and input of oxygen in each and every species that is associated with this reactor. So let's consider each and every species. So let's start with our oxygen. As you can see, there is no oxygen left in the products. However, they, they are, there is of course oxygen in the feed. And note that there are two moles of atomic oxygen in one mole of oxygen gas. So the net output flow rate for oxygen would be 2 multiplied by a zero output minus the flow rate of oxygen coming in which we calculated to be 126 and let's do the same thing for each species now if you look at CO2 we have 2 moles of um, oxygen in 1 mole of CO2 Okay, so that will be a 2 there, multiplied by the output, which is N2CO2. We don't know this for now. We have no input. Similarly, with carbon monoxide, we have one mole of uh, oxygen in a mole of carbon monoxide, so that's simply a 1 and that will be N2 of CO and there's of course no feed of carbon monoxide 
now let's go to the formaldehyde one mole of oxygen here so that's a one of N3 CH2O there's no feed of this particular species so we write negative zero now let's look at the case of methanol okay also recall that we have already calculated this to be 180 okay so let me just write it here okay and this will also be 180 okay so once we are done with that let's look at our methanol we have 180 coming out and of course 400 coming in and there's one mole of oxygen in my methanol so let's take that into account the output minus the input now let's look at our HCOOH there's two moles of oxygen here so that will be a 2 and 0, 0,005 and 3 okay and there's no feed and finally for the water there's one mole of oxygen in one in one mole of water and no input of water okay and all of that the summation of all of this will be zero indicating that there is a balance of oxygen across this reactor okay now we can write the same balances for our hydrogen okay and note this step by step right be very consistent Okay, so let's look at our hydrogen here first. There's two moles of atomic hydrogen in one mole of hydrogen gas. So that will be a 2. And that will be 0 0.075 of N2. And there's no hydrogen coming in at the feed. Okay, so that's the only hydrogen in this particular stream however there's lots of hydrogen here in stream 3 so let's start with our formaldehyde CH2O minus 0 And we have four hydrogens in our methanol. Okay, remember that this is also 180. If we take into account our C O H C O O H, then we have two hydrogen atoms so that will be a plus two in three minus zero and finally two atoms of hydrogen in one mole of water Okay, and the total summation of all of this will of course be zero. Finally, let's look at our carbon balance. Okay, so it's just the same old thing, okay? So it's just, we're looking at output minus input of each species, and we are counting <clears throat> the number of um, atoms of a particular element in our species. Okay, so finally, let's complete our carbon. <clears throat> K 
Okay, so let's look at our CO2. So there's just one atom of carbon there. So we have a 1. Okay, so output minus our input of CO2. And the same with our CO. Okay, so that's our carbon in this stream. We have lots of carbon in stream 3. Okay, if we look at our formaldehyde. And our methanol, there's just one carbon in methanol. Output minus input. And finally for our HCOOH, again one carbon atom. And that is all once again equal to zero. Okay, now our nitrogen does not participate in the reaction and it doesn't split off into the two streams. So actually calculating the amount of nitrogen is quite trivial. We already know the nitrogen flow rate here, so we'll know the nitrogen flow rate in stream two. Okay, and this is how we write out our element balances. Now once we're done writing them out, let's consider rearranging these balances, simplifying them of course, working them down. Ultimately we get these three balances here. Okay, so that's uh, eliminating all of our brackets and um, considering all of our terms. So our like and unlike terms. So we end up with three equations. However, we have five unknowns. Okay, and this includes the total nitrogen, uh, sorry, the total flow rate for stream two, the flow rate of carbon monoxide in stream two, the flow rate of carbon dioxide in stream two, the total flow rate of stream three, and the flow rate of water in stream 3. So at the moment we have five unknowns but only three equations. However, we can also include in our total balances. So we note that our total flow rate of stream 2, which is N2, is equal to the following. And we also have our flow rate for stream 3 being expressed in terms of the flow rate of water as well as the flow rate of our COOH and we know the composition of that. Okay, so that will be 0 0.005 and once we rearrange these two balances we come out with two more balance equations. Okay, so now we have our five equations and five unknowns which we can solve sequentially. Okay, so we can put it in a matrix Okay, and this is classic um, Gaussian row reduction where I simply have, so these are my five equations of course arranged neatly for all of my species equal to the right hand side all of which are figures 
and thereafter it's just um, it's just a row reduction technique to obtain all of my different species okay it can be quite elaborate here's what I've done here manually okay simply um, by following the Gaussian reduction rules okay I'm trying to assume the particular form here as you can see getting all of my ones diagonally and getting zeros under the ones this is how row reduction works and by manipulating each of my rows okay and ultimately we end up with the following values for all of my unknowns and once I have these values it's very easy to get my compositions okay so as you can see the element balancing writing out the balancing is relatively simple and easy to understand so you just have to go through it again and again until you understand it completely and the rest is just tedious solving of simultaneous equations this is of course quite a nightmare when doing it manually with um, pen and paper and a calculator however in reality in engineering problems in industry you will perhaps just set up the balancing on an Excel spreadsheet and let the Excel spreadsheet do all of the row reduction the calculations for you okay or any other engineering software such as MATLAB for example okay and that's the example solved there are other ways of looking at element balancing and I have previously done this however it usually creates more confusion than anything else so I'll just look at it briefly we could write for each species the net output flow rates individually so for all of my species here oxygen hydrogen carbon monoxide etc I've written out the output minus the input everywhere output minus input output minus input and expressed it quite simply and although this in itself is quite tedious thereafter writing out the element balances becomes more simple okay so remember how we ended up writing in the beginning 0 minus 126 so now I've already got it all here so there's my 2 multiplied by negative 126 and so on and so forth okay this might be more complicated for you so I suggest you try and grasp the first method where we have just written the balances out okay this method here which is far more easy to understand and is a lot less work if you know what you're doing okay and that's the problem solved <laughs>